Okay guys, we're back. Welcome to my second drawing video. Now I'm specifying my second drawing video because we're actually going to have some others by other artists, so that's pretty cool. But this is the second one for me. If you like the last one, I'm really glad to hear that because I had a great time making it. Now the comic today won't be as vanilla as the last one, so I'm going to warn you now that we're going to be dealing with some cartoon violence and a complex and controversial theme. That's right. It's Israel versus Palestine. In the last video, I made some tall promises about how the next comic I'd draw would be more complicated. And this one is, I guess, but only barely. I'll get around to America and company sooner or later. Sometimes the ideas, they just don't flow. Uh, like they say in the trailer park, boys, sometimes she goes and sometimes she doesn't. This time she didn't go. For America, at least. With everything that's happened during the last eight days in Israel and the Gaza Strip, I had a hard time not coming up with a comic that covered this topic. Current events are just so much easier, for obvious reasons. Now, I don't want to get into too much history with the Israel versus Palestine conflict because it's really complicated. And honestly, I've only got 11 minutes of footage, so I don't have that much time. I also don't want to set the comments section on fire. Basically, I'll try to sum it up. As of last Saturday, Hamas attacked Israel with a large number of fighters. They took hostages. They caused a lot of chaos and damage. And as a result, Israel naturally declared war on them. And that's what this comic is about today. If you want to know more, open up a Wikipedia article and set aside a good uh, 45 hours. When it comes to where I personally stand on this whole thing, well, I don't. I sit. With conflicts like these ones, the only way you can win the game is to simply not play at all. That's not going to stop me from writing a comic about it, though. I mean, freedom of speech and all that. So in a little bit, you're going to see me represent Hamas's horrible attack on Israel by having Palestine whack Israel across the head with a baseball bat. How whimsical. Also, it's really fun to draw. For some reason, I've been really good at drawing people getting whacked with baseball bats. It's, I don't know, weird talent. Anyways, I noticed in the last video, I had a lot of trouble trying to line up the dialogue with what was being presented on the screen. And for that, I apologize. Going forward, I figured I'd focus less on just the artistic stuff. I mean, it's pretty boring anyways. How many times can you hear me say, I'm using a three or five pixel brush? I'd be saying that through the whole video. By the way, I am using a five pixel brush. Oh, and like before, I'm also using the flag colors taken directly from Wikipedia. Beyond that, I think the rest of the tips are probably better viewed than actually explained. It's all yellow lines anyways. It always was. Some people, very talented people I'd like to add, enjoy drawing Israel as an actual hypercube. Oh yeah, for those who didn't know what Israel was, it's a hypercube. It's a joke from the old Crouch Hand days. I'd explain it if I could, but I have a hard enough time explaining things I do understand. Of which, science is not one of them, so good luck. But as I was saying, some people draw these beautiful hypercube Israels where the character is transparent with like a mini cube inside it. It looks really cool. It's also really difficult though. I won't be doing this today. I think I tried it once and I had a really hell of a time with it. When it came to actual art, I would put myself in a B tier. When it comes to hammering out comics quickly, I'd be cocky enough to put myself in the S tier. But as a result, they aren't always as beautiful as they could be. But like the Poland ball description always says, these are wiggly mouse drawn bad boys. Actually, I'm gonna put uh, my foot in my mouth right now. One more small tip. For this motion scene of the bat swinging and bonking Israel in the head, some black lines trailing the bat would work perfectly well for them to show motion. However, there's a lot of black already present in this comic, what with the thick outlines and then one of Palestine's bands up top. So I'm gonna have a faded brown line sort of follow the bat to show its path through the air. I also think it kind of looks nice this way. The other, uh, the parts of the bat trail that cover Palestine will also be washing out to further show this effect. Oh yeah, and to really drive home the point that Israel, you know, he is getting bonked in the head by a baseball bat, I'm going to draw some, um, a yellow explosion type thing just to show where the actual whack was. And then in dark, bold red, I'm going to write BONK and all capitals. I think that really gets the message across, no? Now, the actual context of this comic is pretty simple and self-explanatory, especially if you know everything that just happened, you know, the stuff I explained. You know, after this boogaloo where thousands of Hamas fighters poured over the Gaza Strip border wall into Israel and wreaked havoc, the Israeli government swore revenge. They're probably going to try and rip Hamas out of Gaza, both root and stem, like some Game of Thrones stuff. And, you know, everyone knows how Israel operates, especially the Israelis. Because of this knowledge, they warned the civilians of northern Gaza to collect their belongings and vacate the premises. They have 24 hours to do so. Now, we're talking about over 1 million people here, so this isn't going to be easy. And given how they're probably going to get lit up like the 4th of July, they don't really have much of a choice either. Okay, but here's the kicker. And this is what this comic is really about. 
Despite this warning to evacuate in 24 hours, the Israelis aren't really letting any Palestinians out of the Gaza Strip. At least not many, I don't think. They've been told to vamanos, but they can only escape within Gaza itself. And this is a tiny territory. I think it's uh, 11 kilometers wide by maybe 51 or 52 kilometers from the north to the south. It's tiny. The uh, Egyptians control the southern entrance to the Strip, and they've been pretty sparing when it comes to letting folks out as well. So they've been told to escape, and they have nowhere to go, and that's what the joke really is. Really funny, eh? Well, these comics did always thrive on dark humor. Anyways, as Forrest Gump wisely said, that's all I have to say about that. Don't want any threatening messages, but those are always fun. Actually, on the topic of threatening messages from butthurt readers, the most recent podcast episode that Vor Z and Chicken Scout Monkey just released got me thinking about that. If you haven't listened to it, check it out. It's episode two. Now, I've made somewhere between 475 and 500 comics, I want to say. I've lost count. But in that time, I've obviously gotten some backlash. Some of it was just salty little nationalists who couldn't take a joke, and others were totally unhinged lunatics. It really goes to show the duality of man. Surprisingly, though, getting angry and violent messages from Israelis and Palestinians was really rare for me. And when I say really rare, I mean it never actually happened. It's a pretty spicy topic, so I'm really perplexed, if anything, when I think back to the nationality that seemed to get the most seriously upset. And when I say serious, I mean they take the time to write terroristic stuff in a private message. It has to be the Serbians. That, or maybe the Hungarians. Those guys can't take a joke. There's something about Balkaners who lost a bunch of territory throughout history that really seems to breed the crazies. Now, Americans often get roasted for being butthurt, but I'd say they have, um, they have a reasonable amount of butthurt. They'll complain in the comments. They'll pull out the will actually card. Maybe even say something along the lines of, her, her, well, our military budget is double your national budget. We could dust you like a noob. <laughs> Which, you know, it's not even untrue. But for the most part, they're fine. I actually quite like them. And I gotta say, as time went on, they got better and better. Back in 2013, if you dissed America, you'd be fighting a war in the comments section. Now, for the most part, they just laugh along. They've come upon a nice little character arc for themselves. You know, I'm really proud of them. I can't just sit here and roast the countries that get the most butt hurt from these silly little comics without giving a shout out to those who, in my opinion, win the award for taking these jokes on the chin and not acting like little babies. Germany is definitely up there. But after Germany starred in two eh, little events that took place between 1914 and 1918, followed by their grand crescendo in 1939 to 1945, I think we've earned the right to laugh at them for at least a century. So I'm not going to include them in the award. Britain and France are definitely up there. However, they shouldn't win the award either. Britain had their time in the sun. And as far as I know, the sun still hasn't technically set on their empire. So they could just sit there and take it. After all. They're famous for their stiff, uh, stiff upper lip or whatever Churchill said. The French are good sports, especially considering nobody seems really focused on their grand days of Napoleon and conquering vast swaths of territory. Now they're mostly portrayed as a fet surrender monkeys, but like Britain, they also can't win due to past glory. I'll quit blabbing on now. I'll get right to the winner. Here, I'll even do a little drum roll. The least butthurt people are da -da -da -da, the Polish. What a cop out. I know, I know. Of course it's the Polish who take these jokes the best. They're the center of the comics, and let me tell you, they get it rough. They're shown as dumb, they can't get into space, they're often getting torn into little pieces by the Germans, Russians, Swedes, you name it. And they always laugh along, so of course it's the Poles who win. I love you Poles. Poor guys can't even have their flag drawn right. Now they just blend in with Monaco and Indonesia. But don't worry, that pinkish shade of red always lets us know who the real Poland is. One of my favorite artists insisted on having the Polish flag drawn with light gray some years back instead of white since it's true to some historical flag, but that got shut down pretty fast. It's a shame. It did look kind of cool. I'll get back to art for a minute. Here is my bona fide guide to drawing a super excellent and very realistic barbed wire fence. See, I like to find a shade of gray that stands out from the other grays nearby, and then I draw lots and lots and lots of twirly little loop things. This is a dreadful barbed wire fence meant to stop even the worst attacks. I chose not to draw the little barbs because that'd take forever and this comic is pretty simple as it is. And let's be honest, as we can see, I'm no Michelangelo. But still, poor Palestine, he's not going anywhere. Off topic, but kind of funny. After drawing a few Israels, I've kind of noticed that drawing a cube in Microsoft Paint is actually a lot more difficult than drawing a cube in real life. Like, it's quick. I bet even if I could, I could probably draw a hypercube if I was doing this in real life. 
Maybe paint isn't the glorious program I always thought. In this final panel of the comic, I'm going to have Israel looking pretty miffed. Now, you'd be miffed too if you got bonked in the head with a baseball bat. Probably concussed also, and head injuries are no laughing matter. So, for this reason, I'm going to give Israel a cute little military helmet. It's probably going to be out of date. Nah, who am I kidding? It's definitely going to be out of date. I'm going to roll with the Saving Private Ryan type USA helmets. I find they're really easy to draw. The current ones uh, in use by the military are sort of shaped like the old German stall helms to give ear protection, but that would require Israel to be a ball. And Israel's not a ball. Israel is a hypercube. So that kind of helmet would not fit. There we go. It's not looking half bad, eh? Like a little green bell. I add some shine to the rim and to the top to give the helmet some shape, and past that, they're real easy to draw. And they're funny looking. I'll give Israel's helmet a little Star of David, too, for some extra fizzazz. Fizzazz is nice. With this helmet completed, we can pretty much put a cap on the comic. <laughs> now all I have to do is add the dialogue, which amounts to no! and clean up the mess that I left at the bottom, consisting of the leftovers I forgot about. Then I have to get rid of the extra space, too. Boom, and we're done. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in again. It's very much appreciated. Expect more of these, and hopefully I'll actually do one that's much prettier. I just got to think of some ideas, man. It's not easy. Anyways, here's the final product.